Welcome to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan. Hey, there we go, live from the Loft 100 Studios in sunny San Diego, California. Big Biz Show is on the air. Good to have you along. Mike Costa. Hello. I don't even know what you do here. Executive <laughs> producer Greg Todoroff. And of course, not only the Day Trader Trio, but the Big Biz Show band oh, here in it. studio. Come on, give it a some- or, Wow. Or something yeah. close. You like that? They've played together before. They have. I'm They're sensing. Good. Just not today. Uh, <clears throat> who is a... Is a yeah, the, the oh, crash. Uh-oh. Is uh, Howie Crash fine with this? Crash is ready to roll. Howie, what's the weather like in New York City right now? What is it? It's is it sunny? Is it muggy? Is it a thousand? What's going? You're in the same place every time. It, it, it must be. It must be a little colder than you are with the guns out today. Wow! Oh, Look at that. oh did I tell you this segment brought to you by our Ford dealer, oh, our the perfect. all new Ford Bronco? I forgot to tell you. I love it. I got <laughs> brought. Look at this. Look at the brand new Ford Bronco here and the Bronco Sport. I forgot they had sent me a T-shirt. That said Ford Bronco because they're considering. Look at that nice car there. Look at that car. <sighs> but uh, two of the girls have Bronco Sports. This is the new Ford Bronco, of course. Um, I purchased a Ford Bronco a couple years ago and had it, had it painted like my dad's 1972 Ford Bronco what in the mint is that, What if green. is that color? It's called 1972 uh, mint green. Is it? Seafoam green or something oh, awesome. like that. Yeah. Love it. So it looks, but there you go. The new Ford Bronco, uh, potentially a new sponsor here in the program here. Please. They sent me shirts. They said, hey, we're interested in Big Biz. Hello. So there you go. So yeah, that's why I can't go to church because they don't allow guns at church, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. There you go. I don't lift any weights. I'm just had, I just had a salty meal last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Howie, so uh, back to the weather over there in New York. Is it is it hot and humid? It, yep. Yeah, it's it's now summertime. July is, is peak uh, unbearable in New York. So the heat radi- radiates off itself. There's no breeze like you guys have. So do you, yeah. Do you even Inside go time. outside on, um, uh, on in New York in the three summer months uh, of uh, June through September, July through September? At night, quickly to go somewhere else inside, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, what's happening? We are we are on the uh, third or fourth day of trading here uh, in the third quarter, believe it or not. So July represents the second half of the year, the third quarter. Um, you maintain we're going to have less volatility uh, and so on and so forth. What's the uh, what's the latest? Anything uh, anything off of those those words? Um, yeah, throughout, thinking- throughout July, I think that's that's largely true. Um, I did want to show some a little piece of information that kind of demonstrates what we've been saying. You you always say correctly, you know, if it was a good buy at that price, then it's got to be a great buy now. Uh, I in in normal human psychology always think, oh my gosh, really? Why can't I wait for a discount? Why can't I wait for a discount? Well, well, we are at a discount. To, I mean, if you compare if you yeah. compare the S and P right Part now to the future, yeah. to two thousand and nine, when two thousand and nine the S and P was under a thousand, and today we're talking about closing at six thousand at the end of the year, or fifty five hundred, or something like that. If right. the bar, if the Dow was a bargain in two thousand nine, it's a bargain now. What's it going to be in fifteen years? Right? I mean, it's the same principles we've had all along. I, that that's my philosophy. You know, when people get into a stock, you get into a stock for the same reasons. Um, that, that that you get into any investment, it's a good investment. If you look at if just because the stock, this snapshot in time, let's say Apple for example, might be waning, and I don't know if it is. I haven't looked at a chart, but long story short, if Apple is is taking a nut filled, you know what, in the front yard right now, um, that's a snapshot in time. If you are near retirement, are you going to take all your money out, put it on the ki- kitchen table, and stare at it? No, it's going to work for you. Yeah. So if Apple was a good buy, if you if you like Apple for the same reasons you purchased it before, and it went like this up. Mm-hmm. And now it's down. Do you still like Apple? You don't do, like the price. Do you, do you consider what's it called? The P.E. ratio? Sometimes. Sometimes. Is that what Sometimes. it is? Sometimes. But if I'm a long-term holder, I'm a long-term holder. I mean, unless I'm day trading, and why would you do that? I mean, I, day, yeah. you know, I, see, I talk about individual stocks. I day trade less than a half a percent of my portfolio. Seriously. 99.995% of my portfolio is managed by a professional um, a money manager. Yep. So I don't mess with it. Howie, stay right there. We're going to get more to you. Big biz Smart show. Way to do it. Yeah. Lots of stuff coming up today. We got Joe the Lip La Rosa, Joey Bag of Donuts, Steve Brady back from Tempest Therapeutics will be with us. Did, did you say nut filled, you know what? Yeah, I did. Rottweiler. <laughs>
coming live from the Loft 100 studios. As always, we really appreciate you Hello. being with us. Bon Mike Costa, tato. Mary Bird Godwin, Greg Todoroff, and the man wearing the beautiful, handsome green sweater. You like that? Sully. I love I I like great it. great sweater, yeah. I think he's working you on that. Yeah. You know what I am? Just a week ago, Greg and I were surfing our trunks in a, in a vest. Yeah. In, in 70 degree water, and now it's. I'm yeah. willing fall to come on. Don't you? Aren't you yes. ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Are you, are you, well, it kind of feels ready. like it's here, doesn't it? Yeah. Although we have somewhat of a slight heat wave uh, this we week. We do. That's yeah, just coming off you. <laughs> it's like, and sometimes, me. Sometimes I'm next to you. Oh, oh, oh that's okay, Mary. I do. Is the time? It's happening. Oh, the change. Are, uh, a couple. Oh, every there's oh. been a few times where I'm like. Who turned the heater on? I'm like, oh, damn And on that subject, happening? let's bring up Todd Rampy, our options expert. Hey, Todd. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you. How are you doing? I, I can't even look at you. We always give him the best intro. He's he hot flashes. Yeah. Jesus. I know. Are you coming in studio tune, Todd? We've got some requests over here. <laughs> You're coming to San Diego. Hey, do you my know what wife, I'm... my wife is sitting right there. So yeah, we can't see her. It doesn't matter, you know. No matter where you get your appetite, doesn't come home for dinner. That's what they say. Hey, yes, this is why they won't put us. They'll put us in Bloomberg in Mexico. They won't put us in Bloomberg here in the states because of Ugh, Texas like this. The bar rooms. Uh, you are the uh, from the Wealth Builders Institute. You are the op. You're the stock options uh, uh, king, and you have have sort of talked about renting shares. Do you know what I want to do? And I want to go through it again with you today. I think we sure. should do a paper trade case study with you over the next several months. Love it. And, 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 and figure out how people can actually learn how to do this and, and not suggesting that, that we can do your whole seminar, you know, in, in, you know, 10, 15 minute increments on the TV. But I think if we do it every week or a couple times a week to where you're on and teaching us how to do this, I think there's a way for people to get involved in the stock market. Look, the stock market is not the economy. I say it all the time. 100% of us participate in the economy. I think it's about 47% of us participate in the stock market. Got up to 58% during COVID. But more people, don't you think, Todd, would get involved in the stock market if they knew they didn't have to, 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 to uh, save up 50 grand? They could do it with five or $10,000 at a time? 100%, and I have the perfect perfect strategy to do that paper trade test with you. It requires my favorite trade. It's called a slingshot trade. I can teach anybody how to do it in probably 30 minutes. And it's something that happens anywhere from about two to six times a day. And anybody in the studio can follow along once you see the rules of engagement. And it would be a great thing to do on a day-by-day, week-by-week basis so you can see exactly how effective this strategy is. Hey, Todd, you know, there's only two paths to wealth in this country. You either have to own real estate or you have to own a business. Owning a piece of stock or an option is owning a business. If you own one share of Apple, you're owning a business. Yep. You're owning a percentage of the business. And I think, to, to your point, I hear you say all the time that people don't know where to turn to achieve what you call a comfortable life. And you could be a nine-to-fiver. You could be a part-timer and still do this, correct? Yes. As a matter of fact, my most successful students only trade about two hours a day. They trade from the opening bell to typically what I call the morning lunch, um, uh, you know, the lunch hour and the morning session. And they realize that if they sit and wait patiently and only take the best of the best trades, the, the ones that I call A, A plus high value trades, everybody calls them high probability trades, that they don't have to trade very often. They can get in, out, and be down the road. Todd, I, the, 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 the interesting part of this thing is that I, like you, think that uh, trading options is the world's greatest business. Now, people have watched me for, listened to me for th over 30 years on the radio and watched this for over 16 or 17 years on TV, and they, and, and they hear me day trade. Only a very small percentage of my portfolio do I day trade, but... I do day trade for a couple of reasons. Number one, it helps you for me to tell you how to trade stocks. But now I've got a partner in crime, and I'm the Robin to his Batman on this one, Todd Rampey. Todd, I want you to talk to you about talk about Wealth Builders Institute because you take people through this and and tell our audience who didn't catch you last time, who's about to see you on a frequent basis, what exactly options trading is. Options trade. You hit. You said it. You said it uh, um, the last time I was on, and you just said it again. Options trading is renting the share 
of stock. So you don't have, or a hundred shares per contract is liter literally what it is. That way you don't have to come out of pocket a tremendous amount of money to participate in trading stocks. The only downside is that they have an expiration. I, don't, I can't remember what the, the exact definition of options is, but it's something like, you know, buying a predetermined asset at a predetermined price uh, and, and having to expire by a predetermined time, something like that. And being able to come in and get in and out of the market, which, by the way, most people are more comfortable, even though, you know, the three types of trading, three types of markets, it's, it's um, uh, uh, buy and hold, it's swing trading, sure. and it's day trading. And everybody looks at day trading like, oh, that's gambling, until they realize you're in and out and you're safe. You know, like I said last in the time. In a day, yeah. in the same day, correct? In the same day, yeah. in cash at the closing bell. Yeah. Yep. Todd Rampey is the founder of the Wealth Builders Institute. Uh, find out all about him and Wealth Builders Institute at wealthbuildersinstitute.com. Todd, so are slingshots going up in price or are they going down in price? <laughs> <laughs> No. Remember the wrist rocket? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. man! Hey, hey. hey when you see when you, when you see the pattern, yeah, you will you clearly see it, and it doesn't matter if the market's going up or down. Somebody we have slingshots to the upside, slingshots to the downside. Somebody who is standing on square zero and is like, "Oh my God, Todd, I want to do this. I want to do it with you." What is their biggest mental hurdle? Is it's got to be risk. It has it, to be. Is risk. Is it risk or is it? I have no. You're speaking Russian to me right now. Okay. What what is it? There are two emotions in trading, and that's it. Fear and greed. And market, fear, market, market runs on two emotions, fear and greed. Rusty Nails right. used to say that's it runs right. on beer and weed, but, yeah. it's, <laughs> but, but, it's, but, but it's fear and greed. Continue, sir. That's back, that's, that's back when it was illegal. Yeah, it's, exactly. legal. <laughs> yeah, it's not even any <laughs> fun anymore. <laughs> hey, can, I, I, as you're explaining this, I also want you to take into consideration in, in, in your answer here in terms of the two, the two factors that people are thinking. You've got people that will, that will only do something if it's 100% risk-free, like your parents that are 90 years old. Mm -hmm. Then you've got moderate risk and you've got low risk. That's got to be part of what they're, what they're concerned with, right? Definitely. And one of the things that I drill into every student's head is that you have to mitigate risk. You have to get into a trade and immediately put your stop in a very small stop so that you don't risk a lot of money and have that potentially wake you up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat wondering what the hell you did. So that's what you I know, talk about in my trading when I talk about day trading. It's called refuse to lose. I refuse to lose 5%. I put a trading stop in. The second I, I buy a stock, I sell it. Or at least they put an order in to sell it and a 5% trailing stop yep. is what he's talking about. And what that means is you can set it and forget it. It means that, again, in the middle of the night or if you wake up in the morning and the market's open here on the West Coast at 6.30, uh, the East Coast, they open up at 9.30 in the morning and you've missed that because of a meeting or you're sleeping. Stock went down 10%. Well, you got out when it lost 5%. You refused to lose 5%. It's sort of the same thing you're talking about here, correct? Yep, definitely. And when, when you get into one of my qualified trades, you immediately put that 15 cent stop on the option, but you also have a predetermined amount that you, you're, you know, basically a target to get out. And it's not based on, hey, I want to make 500 bucks or 5,000. It has nothing to do with the money. It has everything to do with the average move that the stock makes during the day. They cycle in average moves. And I would be willing to bet that not one in 20,000 traders knows what I'm talking about. But I'll tell you what it is right now. It's I'll tell you, a dollar. Listen to me. I think this, you need to be on our uh, on one of our blocks every single day. And we go through and we take a watch on this every single day. <laughs> I, I, seriously. Talk to us. So, so talk about this dollar you're talking about here. Okay. So you get into Tesla. And by the way, Mike, I emailed you a, a copy of a trade that I took. I think it was Thursday or Friday. Just so you can see what my charts look like. You see my matrix. It's, it's real. Stock symbol oh, TSLA, by the way. <laughs> Tesla. All right, yeah. continue, Todd. Let's take, take us through this. So you get into the, let's say you get into Tesla and it's up round numbers, 200 bucks. During the day, the, the, the price of Tesla or any stock for that matter will cycle. And they cycle usually in $1 increments. They'll go up a buck, sideways a little bit, come down. And most people don't realize that. So when they get in, they think, oh, I'm in the trade, so I'm going to hang on till it goes to the moon. I'm going to make a ton of money. Stinking thinking. You have to get in. You have to understand that if the average move is a dollar, set your profit target there and get out and wait for the next trade to set up and just repeat the process. And, that, and, and, and if we were to start a paper trade, let's say with $10,000 in our account, what would be step one, Todd? 
Step one is you're going to paper trail. I mean, if you look at, at, at my, um, my rules, I say to every new student, take 50 paper trades. No and once you, well, once you maintain at least a 60% win rate, then move into the, the, uh, the second phase of the training where you're going to trade one contract. So you have a little skin in the game, but it's not enough money that's going to make or break you if you lose it. And I also have a hard and fast rule that if you ever take three losing trades in a row following my system, you need to stop what you're doing because you're doing something wrong. You need to pick up the phone and call me. Todd, next time we're on the air, let's start the process of taking people through this paper trade. How do people get a hold of you? How do people get involved in the wealth? <coughs> Institute, Wealth Builders Institute. You can also go, you go to wealthbuildersinstitute.com, but people want to work with you, man. How do we get a hold of you? You can also call us at 1-800-881-5252. 800-881-5252. Can I, uh, I, th I'm just fascinated by this because this is going to get more people to market. Now, I see you actually wanting to participate now. I know, I'm perking up. Buddy, I'll see you next week. Thanks, pal. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Take I care. want him on every single day. Yep. Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. Thanks for being along for the ride. This ride is called The Big Biz Show. Coming to you live from the Loft 100 Studios in sunny Southern California. I'm Costa, the microphone in my hand. <laughs> hold it like this. Goes, because he, okay. he closed his eyes before he sings yep. Blue Spanish Eyes. <laughs> Mary, please, I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, Mary, Mary for Godwin. Mary, quiet down, the men are talking. Good I'm Lord. Again Rick with Todorov. the jokes. And of course, Sully. I like that sweater, dude. You like that? Yeah. Sam, do you hear what they do? In it's here? got a, it's got a very military-ish kind of look to it. Is it a Travis Matthew or a Matheny? Or a... it's a, it's a made in a hurry. Yep. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what it is, and uh, I like it. Um, yeah. What's interesting about uh, it looks like it looks like a, uh, a heavy sweater. Yeah. Um, uh, Mike's wife sweater. asked for a heavy sweater for Christmas, and <laughs> look what showed up. I like this though. This like is a good look. Old heavy. Clearly a heavy sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody's, um, we were talking about Pete Rose and the death of Pete Rose, and talking about Superman. Can I show you the re the, the latest Superman? Sure. Yeah. Check this picture yeah. out here. Oh. That, is, <laughs> that is Garrett Stubbs from the of Philadelphia course. Phillies. Look at that. Bunt, Dude. Uh, lays down a bunt to first base. Yep. And uh, and uh, hops over. <laughs> hops over. Uh, I think it was uh, they were playing the Cubs at that point. Was safe. Is that that's oh, real, that's huh? Great. I mean, obviously yeah, not the real. cape, but the no. hop over. No, the cape was on. He was wearing the cape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the latest trend in baseball, Mary. And that's, you know what? That's. I that's, heard the change of the uniforms. That's how you stay on a baseball team like the Phillies. Right there. And stuff like that. Right there. I think they're going to win. World Series. Is they're it? so freaking good. Yeah, I've got, I've got them pegged to, uh, to win it all, for sure. There you go. There's stuff. Who's that? The Phillies? Yeah. All right. Aren't you, aren't you uh, putting together a, a sports show with Garrett Stubbs' brother, CJ Stubbs, for uh, for Biz TV? I heard we are. No, we are. We What's actually it are uh, offside sports. Offsides. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Stubbs. CJ. Speaking of Superman, there he is. There he is. Uh, I like Troy it. Hazard, of course. Troy Hazard. Not from America. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> from Australia, as Mike likes to say. Uh, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Of course, Troy Hazard is a uh, is a keynote speaker. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He is uh, author of Future Proving Your Business and The Naked Entrepreneur, which Rusty Dale said the cover of looks like a man blowing gas on a skateboard <laughs> heading in one direction. <laughs> it's the first thing. And R Rusty Dale is also the guy who looked at, uh, at uh, Troy when Troy said, well, you have to pay your dues. And, he's, and Russ said, did you say to pay? And there's Roy Tess. <laughs> hey. Last just, week, last for clarity, I am American too. I, I, have I know you actually. I, you are American. You're just not from America. Uh, hey, listen. He does pay taxes. Finally, good. Ferner, <laughs> Ferner, <laughs> Ferner. Troy's, Troy's a good friend and business partner, also. Hey, uh, we started talking about last week when you were on the air with us that America has forgotten to sell. How, how to sell? Yeah. Um, and you and you joined a global sales training business uh, as chairman called SalesStar.com. Uh, yes. and, and what you found out is that, is that the, we have met the enemy and it is us. We just don't know how to sell anymore. We talked about the fact that you get one shot at, 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 at readiness and, uh, and such. And we were talking about selling your business uh, mm -hmm. last week. And, and so I'm going to let you take, off, take over where we, where we left off and give a little review of what we talked about last week. But. Well, where we started last week was a conversation around governance and, and getting your, your backyard in shape in relation to how you record things in your business, because most small business people don't. 
Even large business people don't. I've been working with companies with $50, $100 million revenue and their governance is appalling. They don't have an advisory board. They don't have set meetings. They don't have minutes from those meetings. And as a result, there's no real recorded history. It's all hearsay or it's the founders or owners opinion of what happened in the past, as opposed to we sat down with our advisory board, we sat down with our group of mentors or people that we rely on, we discussed these issues and came up with these action points. And here's how we documented that. That's really important in the big picture. But most times it's overlooked because we don't have enough time. We don't have the resource. We don't think it's necessary. We think we've got the answers. When in actual fact, a suitor looking to buy your business is going to, going to want to know that you've brought in smart people around that table to help you get to the next level faster and make sure you got there using the right tools and the right methods. Troy, how important is it to surround yourself not with yes people, but with no people? Or people that are willing to say, "Hey, you should meet do Mary Bird Godwin." Well, no, me, it's, it's, hey, <laughs> tell me what, no person. Tell me what I, I need to yes hear, and, and not what I want to hear. So, so you don't want me to say yes? It's important. <laughs> <laughs> you answered it. Done. Next Look, question. I, I love people. I love a challenge. And, and frankly, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. Yeah. And so it's important for me to have good people on my advisory board that can challenge me on the direction I'm taking, the decisions I'm making, or even just the idea I've come up with. Because sometimes, you know, in the middle of the night, you come up with some great, crazy idea to drive the business forward. And it sounds good at 3 a.m. after <laughs> yeah, the second right. one. But it doesn't, doesn't sound In our experience, when we're up at 3 a.m., everything sounds good at 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we're up that late. Hey, can I? We talked about governance and financials and org chart. You know, the one thing that we, were, that we started uh, scratching the surface on last week is, is a style guide and branding and, 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 and marks and, and words. I mean, I know Mary, Mary has, has a ton to say about that, but. Is that really important when you're going to sell a business? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, there's two views on it. The first view is if you're being rolled into a bigger company as part of an acquisition strategy, then your name and marks are likely to disappear anyway because you're being sucked into a bigger, a bigger institution. So at, on that strategy, it's not so important. But if you are being aggregated with other businesses or you're being purchased because of the brand value of your business, then you want to know that that brand's all buttoned up. So you've got trademarks, word marks, all registered, not just in the United States, but around the world. And some protocols are really easy to get a hold of to help you with that. The Madrid Protocol is one of them. It registers you in a number of countries around the world for not a lot of money, but it does protect you even if you don't think you're going to go there. Then the, the next person that buys your business may have an idea to globalize your business. And if you're not prepared or protected for that, it kind of puts the handbrake on a lot of that stuff. Troy Hazard, uh, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, chairman, businessman, one of the greatest guys we always talk to here on the show joining us on the BBS. Hey, Troy, how important is it to have a strategic plan in place, like for one, two, three years, maybe even 10 years? You mentioned, you know, uh, if a company gets purchased and rolled into a bigger company, then maybe that strategic plan might go out the window anyway. But do you think it's still something you should have in place? Well, the plan still carries because the momentum you've created in your business is still important. So your customer base, the way you deal with them, the way you engage them, how often you engage them, the unit economics of your business will still transfer into a bigger entity. And they want to know that's protected. And, and we call that quality of earnings. If you can't prove that your earnings will be there post transaction, then they're going to have a, have a bit of a wrestle with you on your price. And that's going to make it more challenging in due diligence. So it's very important that the unit economics is protected such that it will transfer into a bigger entity or, in fact, know that it's going to continue long after you've left the scene. And a lot of people overlook that. They think that, well, we've been growing year on year and it's great, but not all growth is good growth. Good growth comes from qualified growth to qualify those earnings and also give that suit of the, the, the confidence that, that you can do what you say you're doing and you can continue doing that long after you've left the scene. Hey, uh, Troy, I, Troy Hazard, by the way, of course, uh, author of Future Proof of Your Business. Real quickly, i got about 30 seconds here. Let's say you've got a great business, got everything in place, but you woke up uh, drunk on your front yard one morning and, 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 and the news is out there or you stepped in it and smeared on the carpet as a business. How, what happens if there's, there's a pass there, but everything looks good in the business, but maybe there's a hitch in the giddy up? How do you get through something like that in negotiation? Are you asking for a friend selling? No, I'm chat? asking. <laughs> I'm asking you for a reason, big fella. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Look, that's a bigger conversation. I'm not going to get to it in three seconds. All right, next, next time we get together. I want to know what happens, though, when you have a company that uh, um, Elon Musk would be a great example. Where, where, hey, thanks, Troy. I appreciate it. We'll see you next week, buddy. Troy Hazard, TroyHazard.com. Make an entrepreneur and future proofing your business. I want to know is like Elon Musk has, has stepped in it a couple times. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Does it affect valuations going forward? Is what I want to know. Loft 100 Studios, The Big Biz Show, our affiliates, and our hosts are not registered investment advisors or broker-dealers. Our show hosts make no commitment that the purchase of securities of companies profiled or otherwise mentioned in our programming are suitable or advisable for any persons or that investment in such securities would be profitable in general. Given the nature of our company's profile and the lack of an active trading market for their securities and investing is highly speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We profile selected publicly traded and privately held companies on our program. Most of these companies that we profile have provided compensation to Loft 100 Studios and its host for the profile coverage. Three, two, one. From time to time, we sell shares of the companies profiled in the open market that we receive as compensation for coverage of client companies. But never sell stock if we are speaking about, interviewing, or covering a public company who has paid compensation. Specific questions on compensation can be obtained by contacting producer at sullyhentgroup.com. Listeners should verify all claims and do their own due diligence before investing in any securities mentioned on this program. Investing in securities is speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We encourage our investors to invest carefully. Duh. And read the investor information available on the website. On the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, at www.sec. Or the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, at www.finra.org. Loft 100 Studios, it is the Big Biz Show. Hope you guys are having a great day. Costa Mary Bergodwin, Greg Todorov, Sully, and of course, the greatest in the business, the DTT. That's the Day Trader Trio. Love you guys. 125 million TV homes strong every weeknight. Of course, we are also on American Forces Network in 175 countries and all the shit to see. Also, thanks to Biz TV, American Life Network, and Bloomberg El Financiero. Oh, wow. There's 15 million homes out in Mexico. Soon to be in Bloomberg EU, because and they won't put us in the Bloomberg US until late night. Baby steps. <laughs> Baby Wonder steps. Was. 3 a.m. What do you know about gold? I knew nothing about gold till I met uh, David Garofalo. And look who's in studio today. Uh, David Garofalo, of course, the chairman and CEO of Gold Rodeo. So great to see you. Good to see you. You are as handsome as you are on television. <laughs> You're too kind. Um, I, I, wanna, I want you to talk about, before we get into to, uh, to, uh, uh, Gold Royalty Corp, by the way, they are publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. G-R-O-Y is their, is their ticker symbol, G-R-O-Y. So, with respect to we're hearing uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell dropping uh, 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 half a percentage point, going from I think a five three to a four seven or something like that in terms of short term discount window rates, you're seeing um, they're saying inflation is going down, but the CPI doesn't include food and gas, and if you merge that with the fact that gold is a great uh, hedge against inflation. Plus, we have uh, numbness to prices. They're saying inflation is going down, but, we're still, but prices are still high. Gold is the place to hide out, I'm assuming, still, in your opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a barometer, um, an agnostic, objective one of where real inflation is. The reason it's going up is because inflation is still going up. It's still sticky. Mm -hmm. uh, they're pivoting on interest rates simply because they've got massive debt to deal with. It's not a Federal Reserve phenomenon. It's a global phenomenon across central banks globally. So they're going to lower interest rates to inflate that away. Gold prices will continue to go up as a result of that. Every time we've, we've pushed uh, a money flow into the system, going back to 1940, and in this case, we're talking about um, stimulus that we got during COVID. We probably got too, too many. But if you look at a point in figure chart where money flow pops into the market, interest rates follow literally right behind, and, 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 and inflation as well. There are those that say gold is not a hedge against inflation, 
But it also, they're, they're, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, although uh, I have conspiracy theory music. Oh, I like that. Oh, <laughs> I'm not a conspiracy theorist, Peaks. however, I... Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yep. Peaks, I win. You are oh, I, old. I win. You are old. <laughs> you win, you win old. gold. Yeah. Yeah. I think that some of the stuff that we're hearing is manufactured for the election on both sides of the equation. And I think that's why you say, they, they say inflation is going down, but it's not really going down. No. Is, is that, is, is, is it, uh, without getting political, is it, is it of your opinion that there's, there's always a, a, a grain or two of, of mistruth that comes out in some of these numbers that we're hearing every week? Yeah, look, and I think it's really driven by the debt levels. I think uh, there's, there's no fiscally responsible way for any government to deal with these debt levels. And it doesn't matter who wins this election, the government's hooped either way. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to continue to ease monetary policy. In other words, expand money supply no. in order to deal with debt. On the big screen here, you're going to see uh, 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 usdebtclot.org, and you're talking about debt. It's oh. it looks like a speedometer here. Uh, there it is, right behind yeah. you, David. And, and, yeah. and, and you know, if you talk about debt per ta citizen, that means little babies and everybody. One hundred four thousand dollars, nine hundred fifty percent debt per taxpayer. Uh, and then, of course, we've got 35 trillion in U.S. national debt. Now, keep in mind, some of that's people buying U.S. savings bonds and so on and so forth. But you're talking about that kind of debt. But there's also the debt that, that people are carrying on their credit cards, which is at all time low during COVID, but now is, is somewhere else. Talk about um, the, the reason I like to, to, to start off with a top down picture with you guys is because you guys are at the top of the food chain in, in terms of, of, of the gold business. And, and what I mean by that is you guys are basically a financial institution for the mining industry. Talk about what, what uh, Gold Royalty does for the folks who haven't seen you on the air before. Yeah, we are. We're a bank that singularly focuses on the precious metal universe, providing capital to the explorers, the developers, and operators to build, optimize, explore for mines in an industry that, frankly, doesn't have access to the capital markets right now and hasn't for a good part of a decade. And so it's been a nuclear winter for the explorers, and we're providing capital for them. And the industry needs us to do that because it's shrinking. Now, that's why we've seen so much M&A across the producer universe is if you're not finding it, you're going to have to buy it. You're going to have to consolidate with other companies. But that's a zero-sum game for the industry. Like, we need exploration success to replace depleting reserves. David, you guys, at, at the same time we're talking about inflation, you guys provide insulation to investors yeah. from, 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 from cost inflation. Yeah. Talk about that a bit. Yeah, we're all top-line exposure. So when we put capital into an asset... Uh, mine, either producing mine or a development stage mine, we take a royalty back in return. But the royalties on gross revenues, top line. So it doesn't matter what happens to the operating or capital costs at the mine site. We give optimum leverage to the gold price without worrying about cost inflation. Very scalable business. And we have a few of our employees here today. Half of our company is here today. It's a very small group of highly uh, experienced professionals that are able to put capital to work with assets they understand. David Garof uh, Garofalo, Chairman CEO, Gold Royalty Corp. Uh, is he saying it wrong, Mike? Is it Garofalo? It's Garofalo. Is that what you're right? <laughs> right? Yeah. I wanted to say Garofalo. I know you did. Or go Gar. And you're going to say, David, you're saying your last well, name wrong. Exactly. I nailed you. Uh, their ticker symbol is G-R-O-Y. We were talking about the geolog geologics before the show. Um, have we... Have we even <laughs> tipped into, <laughs> tapped into how much gold is on our earth, in our earth? Are we, are we getting Isn't it there? two Olympic-sized swimming pools? Isn't that Will the... We run, I thought that was platinum. Or no, no, it's, it's gold. I mean, it, if you took all the gold mined, it's about 200,000 metric tons. It's been mined since the beginning wow. of time. All of it is on the earth's surface. It's around people's fingers and wrists and whatnot in, in central bank vaults. Okay. Uh, it's indestructible, so it's always been around. Uh, but it's a very minute quantity. Uh, volumetrically, a couple Olympic-sized swimming pools, God. not a lot. So you can imagine even a small reallocation of capital in general equity markets mm -hmm. would move the gold price astronomically higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, have to, I gotta ask you, um, as a top line, you know, highest on the food chain in gold mining, in the gold mining business, how, how, do, how do rising gold prices even affect you? I mean, you're, you, you're, you are sort of like the laundromat, the liquor store, uh, during a recession, they're still going to make money either way. Aren't you making money either way, whether prices go up or down? Yeah, absolutely, because we have a very low cost structure. Uh, like I said, half of our company is here, so we have very low G&A costs. And so virtually all of the dollar in revenue falls right to the bottom line, so regardless of where the gold price is. So we have a remarkable uh, you know, inelasticity of, of supply to price or to or cash flows to price, but we have a lot of leverage on the upside, and I think that's the important thing here. 
David, you guys, we were talking about when first our interview breaking, uh, you know, breaking into free cash flow in 2024. Has that happened for you? Yeah, it has. Way? In fact, we had the first two quarters of positive operating cash flow earlier this year, and we're going into overdrive in the second half of the year with a couple of major uh, new gold mines coming into production and mm -hmm. resulting in significant revenue growth in the second half of the year. And we're looking uh, wait, at- Wait, 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 you're, yeah. you're talking about sector leading gold mines too. We're not just talking about gold mines, correct? Yeah, we have royalties on three of the five biggest producing gold mines in North America. And these each have 20 years plus of reserve life ahead of them. So we have that foundational element to our business, which is kind of unique for a small cap player in the space. What's the, so, so, so in your mind, and I, we got just about 45 seconds left here. In your mind, what is next for you in the last quarter of 2024 going in so much as you can tell us as a CEO? What are you looking forward to most for 2025 after that? Yeah, we're looking at free cash flow growth, positive earnings growth, 60% compounded growth and revenue through the end of the decade. And all that incremental revenue falls right to the bottom line because our cost structure is flat. Yeah, the, the, the meaning that uh, we're in the wrong business is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> David, thanks for coming in. It's great to see you coming anytime in the studio. We're following the stock for a while here. David Garofalo, Chairman and CEO, Gold Royalty Corp. Stock symbol G R O Y. Does it make you? Uh, you have, do you wear gold, Mike? Other than the Italian uh, chain with the with the, with uh, the with horn? The horn? Yeah. No, that's it. That's the only gold I have. The gold pinky ring. Yeah. I know a guy that knows a guy. Yeah. His name is Garofalo. <laughs> <laughs> Big Biz Show. Big Biz Show. <laughs> you want I take him out? <laughs>
Yeah, if you took an arc, I think from maybe 2018 in the run up to the pandemic where mm -hmm. everyone was having a relatively good time, you've got your first set of data. Your second set of data is chaos. And then your third set of data is recovery. And if you find a blend between the three, I think you're in a pretty good space because that also helps you understand the consumer behavior. It also helps you understand who you should be hiring and for what purpose and what outcome. Because sometimes that's got a bit of a shift too in an unusual or a, a, a strained economic time. Hey, talk about, talk about devil being in the details here because I think, as you said, clients have changed. They're smarter, but I think they're more informed. Yeah, no, maybe. They are more informed, but I think as a business owner or leader, you've got to be one step ahead of them. And, and Sally, you've known me for 15 years now. and Seems like a lifetime. Good at, yeah, it has been. Uh, I'm pretty good at playbooks. I mean, I'll go into most sales meetings with a word-by-word, -word, blow by blow playbook, and I, I feel pretty comfortable and confident. I know where I want to take the conversation, how I'm going to control the conversation, and more importantly, control the outcome. But over the last couple of months, I've learned I am way off the pace on that. There is so much more data you can put into a, a, a technology da dashboard or, or some sort of a metric format that suits your business that gives you more detail and helps you create those stronger data-driven decisions. Because sales is a data-driven decision. We sometimes just forget that. Troy, is, is there the next wheel out there to invent as far as sales are concerned? I mean, you have just everybody trying, like Silly just said, to be the biggest, the fastest, the best, the cheapest. Is there that one that everyone is kind of pivoting to and saying, okay, if we're going to be successful in the next you know, 10 years or so, that's what we've got to concentrate on? In my belief is that we need to anticipate. And if you look back over history, that's always been the case. Apple anticipated the smartphone, anticipated the iPad, anticipated so much technology that we never knew we wanted or needed until we had it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at those sort of companies as examples, that's still a trend. The ability to be able to be one step ahead of your consumer and give them something well before they even think they want it or need it is got to be key. And that over, overrides price or or even quality in, in some respects because it's about getting it before anybody else has. And so there's a certain fear of missing out that comes with that in a sales environment that I think sometimes we don't put enough weight on. How important is coaching? Because let's face it, I mean, we're passing this, this craft on of sales down from generation to generation as, as the landscape is changing. Coaching's gotta be difficult at this point. Well, here's what also, I've also learned in the last couple of months is that it's absolutely key to the whole process and not just coaching, but also understanding who you're coaching. Have you got the right sales guy talking to the right target? Are they actually having a conversation or is your salesperson talking at them, not to them? That's, that's point number one. And then point number two, if you've got the right guy talking to the right person, the right target, then we've got to keep reminding them how that conversation should go. Because sales got typically, oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to worry about that. I'll be fine. I'll get on with the next sale. When in fact, they've got short memories. They're squirrels in that respect. And so we have to keep bringing them back to the table and reminding them that this is the process. Here's why it's the process. And here's the data we need from the process to make better decisions moving forward. Hey, Troy, we don't like to call them. What do you call them? You call them fish? fish? We, like to call them, we like to call them sheep. Just oh. let's go <laughs> Troy Hazard, of course, Troy Hazard. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. I want to I get him back in studio, but I'll tell you what. Could you imagine walking into a sales environment? Like, you you could sell ice cubes to Eskimos. Oh, oh You could sell please, ketchup to stop, a woman please. in a white dress. Stop. And the, it's so different now. Oh, oh yeah. They, Completely you different. You know why, Greg? Because they can check you. Love, well, we're the number it. one radio program right this second. I mean, those pesky facts and all of that accountability. Check it. That does it for us, Big Fish Show, BigFishShow.com. We'll see you tomorrow.